Hey, I'm Adi Purdila. Welcome to video number two of this mini series about Macaw, the code savvy web design tool. In this video, I'll show you the tool panels. So the first one is on the left. You have some very basic tools that you can use to create your layout. The first one is the select tool. So basically, if you've worked with Photoshop, for example, uh, then you're familiar with the move tool or the select tool, uh, how it's called here. Basically, you use it to select an element and move it around. You can also use it to scale an element like this, and it's accessible by pressing the V key on your keyboard. Next up is the text tool. You can press T to activate it, and you can draw like a text area where you, you can type stuff in like this, or uh, you can simply create a simple text by clicking once, like this. Let's delete these two, and let me just clean this up. The next tool is the element tool, or R, and basically, it's you can think of it like a box, right? Like a rectangle. Uh, there are all sorts of options for it, which I'll go over in a bit. Uh, the next one is the container tool, which is uh, very similar to the element tool, except this uh, has a transparent background by default. The next one is the button tool, or B. So you can create buttons, any kind, any size. Yeah, and you can already type text inside them, which is uh, actually pretty cool. Like this, you can make them bigger. Okay, next up is the input. Again, you can draw it like this. So this is an input. And if you edit this, instead of pressing enter, which won't work in most cases, uh, you can press command enter, and it will automatically exit the edit mode. The same goes for, uh, for a text, for example, if I type and I press normal enter, it will go on the next line. But if I press Command Enter, it will exit the edit mode. The next tool is a hand tool. So you press it or you press space once, and then you can move around to see the different parts of your, uh, of your page. The final tool here is a color picker, which you can access using the eye tool or the eyedropper tool. So simply click on an area, and the currently selected element will get its color from that color that you just selected. So, for example, if here I would have, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's change this background, select this text again, get the eyedropper and click here, the text would become red. Cool. Now, uh, this other tool right here on the bottom this is for global styles. And this is another feature that I love about Macaw. What you can do is, for example, uh, let's say I have this button and let's just make the text white. Okay, now let's say I like this style and I wanna save it for, for later on. Well, I can select this element, go, go to global styles, hit the plus button and I can call this for example, a red button. You can also alter uh, different uh, aspects of the style using these tabs. For example, the text alignment, the border, the background, you, you can add effects if you want. And then you click Save. And then let's say you want another button, button two, and you wanna copy the style from this first button. So you would select button two, go to this icon, and hit on the little plus here next to red button. And this will automatically copy the styles from that button. Pretty cool, right? The final icon is just the feedback icon. Okay, that was it for the tools on the left side. Now, the thing is, when you select a tool from the left, you get matching properties for that tool on the right side. So for example, right now I don't have anything selected. And in the inspector tab, which is this one, 
I have breakpoints. I'll talk about that in the next video. I have backgrounds, so I can use it to set a background image or a background gradient, or actually alter the overall background color of the page. Because since nothing is selected, the page is selected by default. Next is the grid. This is another feature that I love, um, having a vertical grid built in. So you can toggle it by clicking this little icon here. And you can see that the grid columns are displayed, plus a little border between each grid column. And you can alter the way the grid looks by selecting from the three options you have available. You can use the overlay only, which is only the grid columns, the borders only, which only displays the, the grid border lines, or a mix of the two. And you can also alter the total width of the grid currently expressed in percentage, but you can also choose pixels. You can alter the number of columns from the grid. And you can also alter the gutter or the distance between the grid columns. The last field is for page title. Now I just want to go over quickly on the other two tabs. Uh, first one is the outline, where it's actually going to show you all the elements you have in a page. Because remember, this will also create HTML and CSS for you. So right from the design application, you can select an element, and you can give it a class, and you can give it a type. So if I wanted this button to have a class of my button, I would just say button my button, and it would appear in my outline right here. You can also group elements. For example, you can select these two. You can go to elements, group. And now when you look at the outline, you will see a div with a class of container, which contains the input and my button, the two elements which I've just grouped. And you can do this. You can name your classes, your elements right from the design application. And Macaw will just render the HTML and CSS for you when you hit publish. The third tab here is the library. Now the library uh, can contain various assets for your projects. So if you have a few images that you want to add, you would simply hit import and you can add various images. You can click on each one, see what they do. You can also delete them from library. And if you want to use them, you can just click and drag onto your page. Pretty cool. Now coming back, uh, okay, coming back to the inspector here. I just want to show you a few more of the available options when you select various elements. For example, when I select a button, I get a field where I get to specify its type and also some additional class names if I want to. I have a dimensions tab, which allows me to specify dimensions in pixels or percentages. I can also alter it from here with height. I can apply various paddings using this control. So for example, top padding, click on this, let's say 20 pixels on the top, left, 50 pixels on the left, and so on. I also have typography controls, which give me access to the font family, font size, the, the color, the letter spacing, the font alignment right here. And then there's the background. Uh, so I can specify like an image for the background or a gradient and also a background color. Then there's the border. I can choose from some predefined styles. I can change its width. I can change individual borders using these controls the border um, color. And since I opened the color picker, I just want to show you this. Uh, let's say you choose a color, you select it for your project. And you kind, of, you kind of like this color, you want to use it again. Well, you can click this little plus button, it's going to add it to the project swatches. So you, you have access to it all the time. Plus, it gives you uh, a very handy list of color variations based on the color you just chose.
From here, you can select the border radius for your element. You can add some effects to it, like drop shadow, inner shadow, text shadow. I also specify the opacity for these. You have the option to set a link to a certain element. And also you can choose from the existing pages. So if I want this button to go to my uh, page two when it's clicked, I would just do this. And it goes to page two HTML. And in the advanced tab, I have some more attributes depending on the type of element I'm working with. So in my case, this is a button. So the first attribute is the type, which can be submit, reset, or a simple button. I have some typography controls here, uh, stuff for transition, filters, and so on. If I choose a text and I scroll back down, I have different options. If I choose an input, notice I don't have any advanced attributes. Instead, I have some additional ones, some additional properties on the top. For example, the input name and the input type, which can be text, email, password, number, search, or URL. And that's basically it. I think this is a, a very simple to use interface. Now, one thing that I absolutely love about Macaw is its support for responsive designs. More about that in the next video.